Hi everyone, I'm Hannah and I'm going to be taking you through this study skill session. Before starting, make sure that you've got a pen and paper or a Word document open as there'll be opportunities for you to practice what you learn. This study skill session is going to look at references, specifically how they help us assess the reliability of sources. This session is a continuation from the last one on references, so if you haven't seen that one, I recommend you watching it before as it will really help you. References are important for every subject, so the session will be useful for everyone. It's aimed for 13 to 16 year olds, but may be useful for older students too. There are two aims for this session. The first one is to be able to explain how a reference list can help you assess the reliability of a source. And the second one is to be able to recognise reliable references. I'm going to first talk generally about how we can assess the reliability of a source. Before doing this, I want to go through a couple of these keywords to make sure we're all on the same page. So a source is something that provides information. This could be a book, an article, a paper, a person, a photo, etc. And reliability is how able something is to be trusted or believed. To work out how reliable a source is, we need to consider two things. Firstly, accuracy. How accurate is the information given in the source? And secondly, authority. Who has written the source and where has it been published? Let's first talk about accuracy. To assess whether a source is accurate, it's first important to think about what you already know about the topic to check if there are any obvious flags that make you question the source. For example, if you see a poster saying World War II ended in 1948, but you know it ended in 1945, then you'll know that the source is not very accurate and therefore not very reliable. Another way to assess whether a source is accurate is to double check the information that you read. Look at other sources to see if they have similar information. Thirdly, you can analyse the reference list of the source to assess how accurate it is. We'll come back to this idea later and explain it further. Assessing the authority of a source is also very important. Who has written a source and where it has been published tells you a lot about whether the information in the source is likely to be trusted. In fact, before discarding a source that you think is inaccurate, check to see who wrote it and where it has been published. It may be the case that you think something is incorrect, but if it has been written by someone with authority on the topic, you may be wrong. Analysing the reference list is another way of assessing the authority of a source. Again, we'll come back to this later to see how we can do this effectively. You might now be thinking, what does it mean to analyse reference lists to help us assess the reliability of a source? I'm going to explain what this means through an analogy, a comparison between a reference list and a friend telling you something. One reason for looking at reference lists is to find out if the sources that the author of the article you're reading are reliable. Let's say you're reading an article written by someone called Fatima on the impact of sleep on our health and you look at the references in the article. For you to trust the article, in other words to see it as reliable, you're checking that the sources Fatima read are reliable. See it as detective work. Imagine your friend tells you that you have a science test next week. Before you believe them, you want to find out where they heard that information. Let's say they tell you that they heard it from their cousin who goes to the same school. You might still not fully believe them though. But if you found out that they heard it from the science teacher, you would believe your friend more. This is because the science teacher has more authority on this topic than the cousin. Let's go back to Fatima's article on sleep. For you to trust what Fatima has written, you found out where they got that information from. By looking at the reference list, you can find out if they got it from a reliable source. If the reference list includes Wikipedia, not a very accurate nor authoritative kind of source, it's kind of like the cousin, you might not fully trust what Fatima has written. 
But if the reference list includes a scientific journal, a very authoritative source that you can trust, kind of like the science teacher, you will trust Fatima's article more. Have a look at the images on this slide and see where the comparisons are to see if that makes more sense. Let's go back to the first objective to explain how a reference list can help you assess the reliability of a source. Take a few minutes to write down in your own words how a reference list can help you assess the reliability of a source. You may want to pause the video to do this. Here is an example explanation of how a reference list can help you assess the reliability of a source. Remember, it might be different to yours, but yours still might be a good explanation too. Firstly, by checking whether a source has a reference list, we can find out if the source is reliable to an extent. If a source has a reference list, we know that the author has read other sources before writing. If there is no reference list, we can conclude that the source is not particularly reliable, as the information in the source has not been based on research. A reference list gives us a clue on what the author of a source has read. If we look at the reference list and find that the references are from authoritative sources, we can conclude that the original source we are reading is at least fairly trustworthy. The next part of the session is going to focus on how to assess whether a source is authoritative. If a source is authoritative, that means it has authority. To work out if something has authority, we're finding out who has written the source and where it has been published. We know someone has authority if they are an expert in the field in which they're writing. For example, a modern historian who writes about the Cold War has more authority on the topic than a biologist. Let's take another example. Someone who has written a PhD on biodiversity has more authority on the topic of biodiversity than, let's say, a year eight student who studied it in their geography lesson. Can you think of some more examples where one person might have more authority than someone else in a particular topic? You can pause the video now to take a moment to think of some other examples. So we've said that an author with authority is someone who is an expert in the field. But how do you know if someone is an expert in a field? You can look them up. When you're looking them up, you can Google them or use a different search engine and find out what their job is, their experience, see if they've written other papers or blogs to build up an idea of how much they know about a particular topic and what their reputation is. Hopefully you now have an idea about how to find out if an author has authority. We're now going to look to see how we can assess the authority of an article by looking at where it has been published. We know that a source has authority if it's been published somewhere reliable. But how do we know if a source has been published somewhere reliable? I will go through several examples of articles to answer this question. Let's say you're writing an essay on evolution and want to learn more before you start writing. This source here is from a peer-reviewed journal a peer-reviewed journal means that the article has been read by many experts on the topic. It has gone through many edits and has been scrutinised before being published in the journal. With so many eyes already having read the article and checking it is accurate and reliable, we can safely say that this source is reliable and is authoritative. We know this source is from a journal because we can see the volume and issue number, both in the actual beginning bit of the journal that you can see in the picture and in the reference as well. If you see a volume and issue number before an article, it will be from a journal. In your research, you might next come across an article in a newspaper. This source is an opinion piece in the New York Times. It might have some accurate information, but the person writing articles in newspapers is not necessarily an expert on the topic on which they're writing. Newspapers also have a political leaning, i.e. they might be quite conservative or liberal. Therefore, what is published needs to reflect the politics of the newspaper. As a result, 
Articles in newspapers often have some bias, meaning they're not wholly reliable. But you do need to look at each source case by case. Some newspaper articles may be more reliable than others. To check the reliability, you need to look at what newspaper the article has been written in and check to see the reputation of the newspaper and how biased they are and look up the author. You may next read an article about evolution in The New Scientist. The New Scientist is a science magazine that writes about scientific research. Their writers have a science background, so they'll be an expert to an extent on the topic they're writing about. Unlike the journal we saw earlier, it has not been peer reviewed. In other words, it has not been read by lots of other experts in the field. So it's not quite as authoritative as a peer reviewed journal. But it is important to note that peer reviewed articles can be quite difficult to understand and the science magazine is an established magazine that writes about science in a way that is more easily understood. So the new scientist could be a good source of reliable information. The next example is from Wikipedia. Wikipedia is a huge source of information and some of the information may be accurate, but not all of it. We know that Wikipedia is not an authoritative source because anyone can write something on Wikipedia and we do not know who the author of the source is. It is worth mentioning that you don't absolutely have to have the name of an author to trust a source, but if there is no author, the source needs to be published in some kind of magazine or website that is checked in order for it to be reliable and have authority. It's also worth pointing out that many Wikipedia pages do have a reference list, so you can look at the reference list and click on the ones you think may be more authoritative. But to recap, on Wikipedia, anyone can write something and we don't know the author of it, therefore we cannot trust it fully. Next, you may come across an article from the National Geographic. The National Geographic is a magazine that publishes articles about geography, natural history and world culture. It has a good reputation and is known to publish scientific articles. This means it publishes articles that follow the scientific method and it is unbiased. It publishes articles written by experts. So we can trust the information we read in this article. Let's go back to the second objective of the session, to recognise reliable references. Now that you've seen a number of examples, you're going to have a go at recognising which references are reliable and which aren't. Imagine now that you're writing an essay on the causes of World War I and have been given a reference list. Which sources are you going to use in your research? Look at the six references below and decide whether you think those are reliable sources or unreliable ones. You might want to note down on a piece of paper or a Word document the two categories, reliable sources and unreliable sources, and then jot down which references would go in which column. I really recommend you looking up the references if you haven't heard of the website mentioned or the journal to see if you can find out whether it's a website or journal with a good reputation and also look up the authors. Even though the examples you looked at were STEM focused, exactly the same rules and logic applies to humanities examples. You can pause the video here to work out which of these sources are reliable and which aren't. Check what you noted down with the correct responses here to see how you got on. I'll go through why certain references are in each category. The first one, Kelly's article on five key causes of World War One, is written in ThoughtCo. When looking it up, ThoughtCo is an established, reputable and authoritative source on history, so we can trust that one. The next one is written in a peer-reviewed journal, and by looking at the reference, we can identify that it is part of a peer-reviewed journal. And the third one is an article in History Today. After looking that up, hopefully you'll have seen that this is a history magazine aimed at teenagers, which again is kind of well established and the people who write articles there are historians. 
Now, if we have a look at the three references in the unreliable sources category, we can see why they're unreliable. The first one is a reference for Wikipedia, and I spoke earlier about why Wikipedia is not particularly reliable. Anyone can write in it, and there's no authors on the articles. The second one is an article in the Guardian newspaper. Again, there might be some accurate information here, but the purpose of writing in a newspaper might be different to the purpose of writing in a journal, so it might have some bias in it, and we don't know if the author is an expert in the field. And the third one here is a blog. We don't know the author, and it's from a website that is not well established and well known for having authority on history. Just before finishing, I really want to highlight to you that what I've spoken about here are guidelines and that assessing the reliability of a source does need to be done on a case by case basis and it depends on what information you're looking for. For clarity, I've tried to show clear differences between reliable and unreliable sources and it's a good way to start to look critically at sources and references. But do remember that assessing the reliability is not always so clear cut. Thank you for listening to this session and I hope it's been useful in understanding how references can help you assess the reliability of a source and how to work out if a source is reliable.